Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to take a look at the difference amplifier. We're able to hook up an operational amplifier in such a way that the output voltage is a function of the difference between V1 and V2, the input voltages to the inverting terminal and the non-inverting terminal. Let me show you how that works. First of all, we're going to take the current in and out of this node right here. Let's take node A. And we can say that I1 entering the node equals I2 leaving the node. And I2 can be calculated by taking the voltage difference between these two, which is V1 minus V at A, divided by the resistance, let's call this R1. And that is equal to the difference in the voltage between VO and VA, which means VA minus VO, the output voltage, divided by the, re the feedback resistor R sub F. We can do the same at node B, and the reason is because we want to get rid of V sub A at some point. We want to isolate V sub A and, su and substitute it with the equation we get from node B. So when we go to node B, we end up with the following equation. We have I3 going in equals I4 leaving. I3 going in to node B here is going to be V2 minus voltage at B divided by the resistance between them which is R3 and setting that equal to I4 which is VB minus zero which is at gram right here divided by R sub 4. Let's solve for V sub B in this equation right here and notice that VA and VB must be equal to one another because we know that the voltage difference between here is zero since there's no current flowing there in an ideal operational amplifier. So let's solve this for VB, realizing that VB must equal to VA. So we multiply both sides by R4, so we get R4 divided by R3 times V2 minus VB, oops, this is a small b, is equal to VB, which means that R4 divided by R3 times V2 is equal to VB plus, when I multiply this times this and move it across, I get R4 divided by R3 times VB. Or I can say that, hmm, moving the equation around, VB times 1 plus R4 over R3 is equal to, so when I move this to the left side, or I actually flip the equation around and, and factor out a V sub B, that must be equal to R sub 4 over R sub 3 times V2. And finally, what I can do is I can solve for VB by dividing this by that. So I can write this as VB times R3 plus R4 divided by R3 is equal to R4 divided by R3 times V2. See, that's correct. Now I can get rid of R3 on both sides of the equation. And finally, I can write that VB is equal to R sub 4 divided by R3 plus R4 times V2. And of course, since VB is equal to VA, I can say this is equal to VA, which eventually can then plug into my VA right here. All right. So now that we have an equation for VA in terms of V sub 2, I can then continue to develop this right here. I can then say that multiply this times this, I can say that R sub F divided by R sub 1 times V1 minus VA equals VA minus V sub O. Bringing the V sub over here and bringing that over there, we can then write that V sub O is equal to V sub A. Multiply this times this. Uh, let's say, multiply this times this, and move the other side becomes plus R feedback divided by R sub 1 times V sub A. And multiply this times this and move it across, becomes minus R sub F over R sub 1 times V sub 1. Combining these two, I can write the V sub O is equal to V sub A times 1 plus R F over R1 minus R sub F over R1 times V sub 1. 
So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the V sub A in here. When I do that, I will get the following. And let's see, I'm going to need some more room, so let me move over here. And let's get rid of this. So I have some more room over here. So I have V sub O, the output voltage is equal to V sub A, which is equal to this quantity right here, which is equal to R sub 4 divided by R3 plus R4 multiplied times V sub 2. And, oh, let's see here. Let me, hold on. Let me then put this in here, which is times 1 plus R sub F over R sub 1 times V2. Now I can write the V2. And then I can subtract minus R sub F over R sub 1 multiplied times V sub 1. All right. So now I have the output voltage in terms of the two input voltages of V2 and V1, but I'm still not in the right in the final form yet. Now what we're going to do here is a algebraic trick. We're going to move the R4 to the denominator and write it as follows. We're going to write this as V sub O is equal to, this is now going to go into the numerator, so we have 1 plus R sub F over R sub 1 in the numerator, and then by moving this to the denominator, I could write this as um, R3 plus R4 divided by R4 times V2 minus R sub F over R sub 1 V1. And if I divide the denominator into the numerator, I could write the V sub O as 1 plus RF over R1 divided by 1, if I reverse the order, 1 plus R3 over R4 times V2 minus R sub F over R sub 1 times V1. All right, now I'm going to put a circle around that because that is the output voltage in terms of the difference between the input voltages, but we're not quite there yet. Now the next step is a trick that we're going to use in order to get the same coefficient in front of the V1 and in front of the V2. What we're going to do over here is multiply this portion by the following fraction. V sub O is equal to, we're going to multiply this times R sub F over R sub 1 times R sub 1 over R sub F times the quantity 1 plus R sub F over R sub 1 divided by 1 plus R sub 3 over R sub 4 and times V2 equals, oh, not equals, minus R sub F over R sub 1 times V sub 1. Why did we do that? Well, you'll see in just a moment why we did that. We're going to multiply this times what's inside here, which means this times this will become 1, and this times this will become R1 over R sub F. So we have V sub O is equal to R sub F over R sub 1 times this times this is 1, I'll put that first, plus this times this is R sub 1 over R sub F divided by 1 plus R sub 3 over R sub 4 times V2 minus R sub F over R sub 1 V1. Now notice we have an R sub F over R sub 1 here and we have an R sub F over R sub 1 here. Now, if I set, if I set R sub 1 over R sub F equal to R sub 3 over R sub 4. Now that's a special condition. Why do I do that? Well, if I do that, if I set those two fractions equal to each other, then this whole thing goes equal to 1, and then I end up with V sub O is equal to R sub F divided by R sub 1 times V2 minus V1. With other words, if we set up our difference amplifier circuit in such a way that the ratio of R1 to RF, this resistor divided by this resistor, is equal to R3 divided by 4, which is this resistor divided by that resistor. With other words, the ratios of these two resistors must equal the ratios of those two resistors. Then this whole fraction goes to 1, and I can write my output voltage like this. In other words, the output voltage is simply 
the ratio of the feedback resistor to R1 multiplied times the difference between the two input voltages, and that is equal to the output voltage. And of course, if R sub F is equal to R sub 1, then the output voltage is simply the difference between the two input voltages. But this equation right here is the equation we're going to use for the difference amplifier. So whenever we want to put together a circuit in such a way that the output voltage is a function of the difference of the two input voltages, we can write it, we can set up the circuit as drawn right here in such a way with the particular values or ratios of the resistors so that the circuit will be what we call a difference amplifier circuit. And that's how we do that.